<laughs> All right, so I want to do 10.5 number 33. Okay, so now what? You have to. Wait, what? Why? How? Oh, hang on. Because they're, they're both 5 to the exponent. Okay, so there's two bases multiplied together. So I'm kind of thinking, all right, there's a rule that tells me when I've got some fives times some more fives, right? Really, I could think about this as, okay, there's half of five, and then I'm multiplying that by three halves of five. That'll give me two to the five. So five to the six. I'm like five, five to the one half plus three halves, right? Mm -hmm. This is the really the addition of exponents rule that I'm using. And then this is, okay, so what's a half plus three halves? Four halves. Four halves? So this is five to the four halves, which is five squared, right? Mm -hmm. Which is 25. 25. Because you don't actually multiply the 5 times the 5. It's well, just... Ah. Ah, yeah, so don't multiply the bases. The reason you don't multiply the bases is really the thing you're using is this rule, right? There's a rule that says if I have x to the n times x to the m, this is x to the n plus m, right? And this is because here what I'm thinking, right? Is I'm thinking if there's x to the n, that means there's a bunch of x's, n of them, multiplied together. And then this guy is Just multiply all the n. m of them multiplied together. If I'm multiplying these two things, then there's n here, m there, gives me a total of okay. n plus m. Okay. You guys see that? And I didn't need to multiply the bases because I was taking care of that in the counting. You guys all see that? Yeah. Cool. All right. So when there's two bases, you can add the exponents. What's the other rule that's similar? Yeah, there's a rule where I multiply the exponents. So when do I get n times m? What did I start with over here? Something like number 35. Oh, yeah, something like number 35. I have a base to an n to an m, right? Okay. So the, the kind of key thing here, the, like, the mnemonic device, is when there's two bases, you add the exponents. When there's only one, you multiply. You guys cool with that? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's do number 35, since it's basically the same thing. So what do we do? Uh, you multiply a cube by five thirds for the next one. Okay, so I say, all right, this is eight, my base, raised to the product of the exponents. So that's five thirds times two fifths. Which is ten fifths. Gives me eight times ten fifteenths. Ten fifteenths? Ten fifteenths. You guys see that? Or to the two thirds if you want to simplify it. Oh, yeah, and then that's 8 to the 2 thirds. Am I done with this one? Why not? Why are you shaking your head? <laughs> well, you Is it just because I sounded skeptical? <laughs> yeah, that's one of those. That's one of those. You could technically. Yeah, where's the cube root? Yeah, the 1 third means I should be doing a cube root here, right? Do I know the cube root of 8? Oh, yeah, I do. So I could say, OK, one way right, is I could look at this and I could think this is 2 cubed cube root squared. <laughs> right, But this is like the most confusing possible thing. So another thing I could think is, OK, let me say, all right, the cube root is this 1 third thing, right? You guys all see that? So I could say, all right, there's an 8, and then I need a cube root of it. But then what else do I have? I have a 2. That means I need to square this whole thing. You guys see that? 
Yeah, and now I know the cube root of 8 is 2. So I get 2 squared, which is 4. Uh, does, does that rule work? I was putting the, the 2 on the 8. Okay, so that also works. Right, it comes out to the same answer, but is that like across all numbers that that works? Or? Yeah, but why? Does that make sense? So the, the other thing that Matt's saying is he's saying, oh, well, that's one way to think, but the other way to think is to do 8 squared and then cube root that thing. You guys see that? Why is it the same thing? Because multiplication doesn't care, right? Multiplication is commutative, and I'm using this rule, right? So I'm saying, okay, this is x to the n to the m, which is just a product. But I could multiply them the other way, right? And I could use this rule again the other way. Oh, okay. Really what it's saying is that the exponent functions, they all commute. Because they're a kind of multiplication. So. You guys all see that? Mm -hmm. You want to know a cool thing? Uh, <laughs> Plug your ears. You don't want another cool thing. <laughs> this thing here, right? What did we do to get from here to here? Reduce. Yeah, we reduce a fraction, right? You guys all see that? We applied a function and then undid it. You guys want to see that? So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, how is this thing the same as that thing? Yeah. Right? I'm saying, okay. This guy here, right, at this stage, I have 8 to the 10th is 2 times 5, right? Then there's a times 1 third times 1 fifth. You guys all see that? Yeah. That's just kind of factoring out the exponents, right? And then I'm saying, okay. So let me rewrite. There's an 8, there's a 2 and a 3rd, nothing I can do with those. But then there's a times 5 and a times a 5th. So these are the two I'm looking at. You guys see that? So what does this one do? It's 1. Yeah, this whole thing together, these are 1, right? But what does this one just by itself say? What does a 5 in the exponent say? Yeah, it means I should take it to the power of 5, right? I should multiply this thing by itself 5 times. <coughs> what does the 1 fifth say? What is the fifth root? Yeah, what's the fifth root? Okay, see that? So if I took all this junk, I multiply it by itself 5 times, and then ask what's the fifth root of that, it didn't do anything. You guys see that? Yeah. This is really a function and its inverse that are being applied here. That's why I can cancel Cool that? Yeah, you can unplug your ears.